Hello everyone, my name is Ahmad Al-Assad and today I'm going to present the topic of Understanding Class Coupling with Visual Studio Ultimate 2012. As a consultant, I have to deal with multiple clients and I don't necessarily have the privilege to start a project from scratch. Frankly, most of the projects I join, they're either in the middle of the project or at the end. And it could be really hard to understand the relationship between classes or the modules of, uh, of the solution. Visual Studio 2012 allows to understand the relationship between the classes and the namespaces by generating um, like a diagram to represent that relationship. And that diagram uses the directed graph markup language, shows it as DGML. And after the graph file is generated, you can either open it with Visual Studio or any other standard tool. As for the prerequisites for this lab, you need to download the Visual Studio 2012 virtual machine provided by Microsoft. You can download it from the Brian Keller website. It is also recommended to complete the code discovery using the architecture tools in Visual Studio Ultimate 2012 lab. This lab contains two exercises. In the first exercise, we will learn how to use the dependency graphs to visualize class relationships. While in the second exercise, we will learn how to use the circular reference analyzer in order to discover classes that are strongly coupled. So let's start the lab. Okay, so I'm going to log into the machine and the username is Julia and the password is P uppercase 2SSW0RD. And I already have Visual Studio started. If you don't, then you can either start it from the task menu here or by clicking on the start menu all programs Visual Studio 2012 and click on your Visual Studio 2012 shortcut we then connect to the theme foundation server and we, cho and we choose the Tailspin Toys collection Click on Source Control Explorer. Expand the collection. Expand the development folder. Expand Iteration 2. And select Iteration 2. And open the Tailspin Toys solution. And the first thing we need to do is to rebuild the solution. The solution was built successfully. Let's, let's assume that today is my first day at work. And the first thing I did, I connected to TFS, downloaded the source control, rebuilt the solution, and luckily everything wa was building successfully. Now the first thing I have to do before I start coding is to understand how these projects are connected to each other. It will be really tough to understand that relationship between classes and, and projects by looking into the code. Therefore, I'll use the Generate Dependency Graph feature in Visual Studio 2012 to understand that relationship. To generate the Dependency Graph, we click on the Architecture menu, Generate Dependency Graph, for solution. We will notice that Visual Studio will rebuild the solution again. It will create an index for the code and then it will build the graph. The reason why creating a code index is later on when we work with the, with the graphs, 
those operations will run faster than Now the diagram is generated, we will first start by understanding its toolbar. So the first button to the left is the zoom button. If you want to zoom in or click on the, the, the button just next to it, which is the zoom out, or you can click on the zoom to fit button. Or we can also zoom manually by select from, from a drop down. We can select um, like pre-populated percentages, and if we don't like it, we can just type in the percentage we want. Now, we'll, the, the other two bar buttons allow you to change the layout of the graph by clicking the left to right button. It will rearrange the graph by showing them the most dependent namespace or, or assembly to, to the right and the least dependent assembly to the left. Now if we click the right to left one, we will get the opposite. Basically the, basically the most dependent assembly will be on your left and the least dependent assembly will be to your right. Top to bottom, will be will show the least dependent assembly at the top and the most dependent assembly at the bottom the bottom to top will show the most dependent assembly at the top and the least one at the bottom now there is one more button here it's called quick cluster this one will rearrange the graph by showing the most dependent assembly at the center You will also notice that the lines between the nodes have different thickness. The thickness of the lines represent the magnitude of relationship between the nodes. In other words, the thicker the line, the more relationships there is between two nodes. That's not all. I can select a node and expand it. And by expanding it, I can see the relationship between the classes inside the assembly and the namespace. Now, this view may look too small to us. So now I can zoom in and drag, around, and drag the graph around to, to focus a certain area of the graph. I can also change the layout. So if I don't like this, the cluster, the quick cluster view, I can either go left to right or right to left or top to bottom and so on, depending on our preference. For now, let's select the quick cluster view. And let's assume that my colleague asked me to take a look at the product class. So this is too small for me. I can zoom in and here it is this is the product class but if my diagram is like really cluttered with too many nodes I can I can also try to find it by clicking control F and type in product and here it is there is one issue with the search functionality. That is, it will not find the items within the nodes unless those nodes were expanded before. For example, if an item called product exists within order line, it will not be selected or found unless order line has been expanded before. Notice when I select the product node, we will see darker lines. Actually, we'll also see more lines because it will we'll also see the lines between the product class and, and other assemblies. 
not just the classes within the current assembly. The darker gray lines represent the direct relationship between the product node and other nodes. So if I zoom out, we will see that there is a relationship between the product class and the test.model.dll. Now, if you don't want to see those lines, we can select the change how links are rendered on the graph. You can select the arrow and and select hide all cross group links. And here it is. Now we can only see the arrows between or the relationship between the product node and the other classes within this assembly. Now let's change the view from the from the quick cluster to the top to bottom. Selecting the top to bottom view should show most of the lines that are going towards the product nodes at the top of the node, while the ones that are going out of the product node or the outgoing uh, line should be at the bottom of the product node. There are a few exceptions related to the uh, circular reference, for example, between the product node and the adventure state. Now I'll show how to get more information about the relationship between two nodes. Let's switch to the cluster view. I'm interested to get more information about the relationship between the product node and the order line node. So I select the relationship line between the two nodes. Once I have it over the line, I'll see the navigation icon. And if I click the, con the control button and the left mouse click, that the relationship will be expanded. I wasn't able to get an identical graph to the one in the document, but this, but this diagram shows us the relationship between the two nodes. If I zoom in, it shows that relationship between the inner items of the order line nodes and the relationship to the inner items of the product node. And this concludes exercise number one in the lab. Exercise number two, discovering circular references. In this exercise, we will learn how to use a circular reference analyzer to discover classes that are strongly coupled to each other. To launch the circular reference analyzer, go to the legend and click on the plus icon. Select analyzer from the context menu and then circular references. Now if the legend was invisible, then right click on the diagram and select show legend. Notice that the nodes that are involved in a circular reference relationship will have a red border and the relationships that contribute to a circular reference will also become red. Now let's get a little closer to the product node. Let's zoom in. Notice that the, the analyzer is smart enough to not only show the, the circular reference between two nodes but it will also highlight the relationships that contribute indirectly to a circular reference. For example, the on pre order node and the inventory state node, they have a direct circular reference 
in here. While the on pre-order node and the product node, they, they have one line from one of the relationships between the on pre-order node to the product is actually a direct relationship, while the other uh, while the outgoing relationship from the or from the product doesn't directly go to the go connect to the on pre-order node. It actually goes through the inventory state node. Now I'm at that level I can apply what I learned from exercise number one to dig deeper into those relationships to understand how and where those nodes are connected to each other. And that would conclude exercise number two. In this lab, we covered two exercises. In the first exercise, we learned how to use the dependency graphs to visualize class relationships. We also learned about the dependency graph toolbar and how to zoom in, zoom out, reorganize um, uh, the dependency graph by changing its layout, and also how to dig deeper into um, namespace, like assemblies, namespaces, and classes, and even relationships to, to get more information about uh, the item that we extract. In the second exercise, we went through discovering circular references between nodes. At this point, I would like to thank you for watching this video.